Shalom. Giving all great praise and glory to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As always, we're going to start off with Colossians 3.17. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Bahasham of Mashiach Yahweh Give you thanks to the Most High and the Father. Bahasham of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So all, was, all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. Give him all praise and glory and, and honor. Uh, I want to look at uh, Revelation 11 and 8. And it says, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the seat and open and, excuse me, and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take, eat, and, and eat it up. And it, shall, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Say, so take this book and eat it. That's this Bible. It's going to be in your mouth sweet as honey, but in your belly and your stomach going to be bitter. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Just like the angel said. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And that's what's necessary in these last days for all people to hear because it's not coming from the preachers. They're not prophesying about what this Bible is talking about. It's very important that you know what's already written. So you believe in the Most High. You believe in the Mashiach Yahushai. And know that our time is coming. That righteousness is going to be on this earth. Because righteousness is not on this earth right now. And what you see going on is from the Most High's hand. You mean to tell me they could do something the most out of have his hand in it? He has nothing to do with it? Do you believe in him? Most don't believe in him. It's very important that we see this. Understand this. Overstand this. Let's look at some prophecy. Go to uh, Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. You see, Ezra was given, we had lost the law, the Mo, law of Moses. The Most High brought it back to Ezra. He gave him more than he gave actually Moses. Let's look at what he said. Let's start at 2 Ezra 6 chapter. And he said it to me, in the beginning, like Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, Wherever the winds blew, before it thundered in lightning, wherever the foundations of paradise were laid. Understand this. You hear what he said? Wherever the foundations of paradise were laid. See, we were given paradise. We were given paradise. You heard of the Garden of Eden? That was paradise. That's why he told. The Adamites, you can eat of the tree of life, but don't eat of the tree of knowledge and evil. Don't eat of that tree, else you're going to die. But if you eat of the tree of life, you're going to live forever. Paradise, in paradise. That's what I say, before 
the foundations, it says, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid. Before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established. Before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together. Or ever the heights of the air were lifted up. Before the measures of the firmament were named. Or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot. Or ever the present years were sought out. Or ever, or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned. Before, the, before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. Hear that? He considered all those things that was made through him alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended. Hear that? And by none other. He said, by the most high, he said, hey, he made these things. He made them through a Mashiach Yahweh Shai now, but he still made them. That's what it says. Look at uh, Ephesians 3. And nine, so we so I won't just be saying something those that don't understand will understand Ephesians 3 and 9. But he says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That's something that's unknown. A secret. Which from the beginning of the world, as we've been talking about, has been hid in the most high. Now he's prophesied giving you the understanding of the mystery. Something that's unknown, a secret that's been hidden in the Most High. Who created all things by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. As an angel of the Most High, as the spirit of the Most High. When you look at Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 2. <clears throat> Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, <clears throat> what we just read about in 2nd Ezra 6 and 1. Alahayim, it says Alahayim, which means the powers created the heaven and the earth. Right? Because the most I just said, hey, he created all things by a Mashiach Yahweh So you're going to Mashiach Yahweh in the second verse. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters and the Most High started to create everything through the spirit of the Most High as it moved upon the face of the waters. Now that's so much like was shy. Like when he tells you, since y'all say spirit of, spirit of the Most High, he make his spirits angels. He make his angels spirits and spirits angels. Same entity, just different names used by different, you know, different passages in the Bible, but it's the same entity. Right quick, we go back to Second Ezra, Psalms one hundred four and four. Who make of his angel spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. See, he make his angel spirits. So say the spirit of the Most High. Say the angel of the Most High. Like you see the angel of the Most High. I mean, this spirit of the Most High right there in Genesis one and one. And real quick, um, same spirit of the Most High, which is the angel of the Most High. We look at go to verse twenty six. To let you know that the most high and his only begotten son was there. On my shot comes shy, only as an angel. Genesis 126. And the most high said, Let us make, let us, that's plural. When we created all things by my shot comes shy, his only begotten son, as the spirit of the most high, as the angel of the most high, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. That's plural. Okay? So that's plural right there. Point blank. Without a shadow of a doubt. So, right quick, go to the next chapter. That's Genesis. Go to Exodus. I mean, he's in the volume of the books written of him, but I'm just going to show you here. Here it is again. You see in verse 2 of Genesis, the first chapter, it said the spirit of the Most High, right? Now it's going to say something else. The same entity just identified as we just read in Psalms 104 and 4. He makes the spirits angels. Exodus 3 and 2. And the angel of the Most High, could that not be the spirit of the Most High? 
appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Right? And the fire is the word of the Most High. So that's what he's bringing, the word of the Most High. He's the messenger of the Most High. He always used angels to speak to us and deal with us. Which you look at the spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, a true pure spirit, a true spirit, a true a pure angel. Same old, same old. Same, same. This is, this is nothing new under the sun. It's something new to someone that don't know. Uh, Jeremiah 23 and 29. It's not my word like as a fire. That's what he's bringing, the word of the Most High. So he identified himself. Then he identified the Most High. Mashiach is the spirit of the Most High, angel of the Most High. So back to uh, the understanding of 2nd uh, the 6th chapter. Now that we know how the Most High created, he created. Still him. He does it just the way he have it done in his order, how he does it. That's a mystery, like you just said. Mystery that's been hidden in the Most High. Most don't know it. That's why they look at they look at only the Most High, but you forget about the spirit of the Most High that we read about in Genesis, the first chapter, second verse, which is in the first verse, Allah Hayim, that's the Most High, the Mashiach of the created the earth, heaven and the earth, as we just read in Ephesians 3 and 9, but, you know, it's different places too. So going back to second Ezra 6, Verse 6, then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other, but by me also they shall be ended, and by none other, right? So let's look at uh, what, after my second side died, rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days, apostles asked him, this question in Acts the first chapter the sixth verse Acts 1 and 6 when they were when they therefore would come together they asked of him saying Amashiach y'all was shot so I don't like to say that word Lord because that's a European invention Lord and God our European inventions. They said, Amashiach Yahushai, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So let you know, they know that the kingdom is coming to Israel. This is what he said, though. And he said unto them, remember, the, he gonna, Mosiah said, what did he say? He's going to bring, he said, He says, verse 6 of Ezra, the 6th chapter, Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, through me alone, and through none other, through the Most High, as he used the Mashiach Yahushai to create all things. By me also they shall be ended. That's what I'm here. Through the Most High shall they be ended, and by none other, right? So when you look at, uh, they asked him, and that's the first chapter, the sixth verse. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach Yahushai, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father. He said, Me alone, right? You can bring the end by himself, the Most High alone, which the Father has put in his own power. You heard that. Which the Father. Father have put in his own power. Only the most high knows. Man don't know. Hamashiach Abishai don't know. He said, what the most high have put in his own power. That's why he's saying what he's saying here. Second Edward 6 and 6 again. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, like he said, which the Father have put in his own power, him alone, and by none other. See that? That's why Hamashiach Shai don't know nobody knows, but the Most High only. 
Then I said, I said, what shall be the part of the son of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Right? The same question that the apostle asked of Mashiach of Shai in Matthew 24 and 3. Go there, Matthew 24 and 3. And he, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What's going to be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world. See? It's the same thing that they're asking here. Or giving an account of. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of the times? The second of the six and seven. Or when shall be the end of the first, that's this world that we're in now, and the beginning of it that followeth. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, all the way back to Genesis, the 25th chapter, the 25th verse, and the 26th verse of him. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. If you read from Genesis 25, 19 down, you see that they were battling in the womb, fighting in the womb, Jacob and Esau fighting in the womb. For Esau is the end of the world. So that you know Esau would have to be the superpower of the earth during, when? During the end of the world. Now, I challenge you to say, okay, well, who's more powerful than the so-called white man? No one. He's the superpower of the earth. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob, who's the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay? Meaning, we got next. The 12 tribes of Israel have next. Forever and ever and ever. That's why you look at Daniel 7, 18. You want to read it? You can read it right behind me. It's right behind me. <laughs> Daniel 7, 18. But the saints of the Most High, who are the children of Israel, Psalms 148, 14. Psalms 148, 14 proves who the saints are. He also exalted the horn, which is the power of his people. The horn is the power, like the power of a, of a, a ram, a power of a bull. That's his power. He also the, exalted the horn or the power of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise you the most high. So proving the saints are the children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. So now when you go to uh, Daniel's, 718, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Verse 27, and the kingdom and the dominion of the great and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Just like, you know, they just asked them. And asked the first chapter, the sixth verse. Only they didn't know. They didn't understand. If they understood that, they would ask the question. Because they know that we hadn't went through Deuteronomy 28th chapter. The 15th verse to the 68th verse. To receive Deuteronomy 28th chapter, the first verse to the 14th verse. Blessings. No. We hadn't went through them curses yet. Which we can relate to now because we have been through it. We done been for real. Deuteronomy 7, 27. And the kingdom and the, men, uh, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, who are the twelve tribes of Israel, one third, mind you, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. When it says Jacob is the beginning of it, that follower, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, is going to last forever and ever and ever. And all the minions shall serve and obey him. See? All the minions are going to serve and obey the Most High, while Mashiach was shot, point blank, forever and ever and ever. Or they're going to perish, as it is written. So going back to Second Ezra 6 chapter. Verse 10. The hand of man is between
the heel and the hand. Other question answers, ask thou not. You see? Because Jacob's hand held first the heel of, of Esau. They were fighting the womb. When, he, when Esau came out first, Jacob had his, his hand on his heel, fighting. Come here. They was fighting the womb. So it says, and he said, hey, other question, Ezra, ask thou not. Don't ask no more questions. Listen, this is Ezra. <laughs> I answered, did and said. <laughs> I answered, did and said. He already told him, he said, other question, Ezra, ask thou not. I told him to ask no more questions. I answered, did and said. Oh, other one. Oh, master, that beareth rule. If I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee. Show thy servant the end of thy tokens, whereof thou showest me part the last night. So he, this is prophecy that he's given Ezra. He gave, he given him prophecy. So he answered and said unto me, Stand up upon thy feet, and hear a mighty sounding voice. Hear a mighty sounding voice, and it shall be as it were a great motion. But the place where thou standest shall not be moved. You're going to hear like this great motion, but where you're standing, you ain't going to be moved. Like, like a, 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 a tornado is coming right beside you, but where you're standing, you're not going to be moved. Great motion. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid. Give them warning. When it speaketh, be not afraid. For the word is of the end. So the word that's going to come from this wind. And you understand this? This wind, right? And it tells you in uh, 2 Ezra 8 and 22. It tells you who's convert, who's, who's Service is conversant in wind and fire. That's why I went to Jeremiah 23 and 29, whose word is as fire. So the most I speak in wind and fire. That's why I said, whose service is conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true and saints constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful. Right? So now he's telling Ezra. So get over 6 and 14. And it shall be as it were a great motion, but the place where thou standest shall not be moved. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end. These end times that we live in now. Prophecy. And the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things troubleth and is moved. So like y'all have to uh, go back and forth with Bibles because it's, it's been used. Um, for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. Uh-oh. The voice that spake was the sound of it was like the voice of many waters. Keep that in mind. The voice was like the sound of many waters. Let's look at uh, Revelations, the first chapter, the first verse. The revelation, the revealing of Amashiach Yahushai, right? Let's jump down to verse 14 in his head, just give a description of him. His characteristics, how he was. His head and his hairs were white like wool, so he got woolly hair, nappy hair. As white as snow, and his eyes as well as a flame of fire. And his feet, let's look just closely, and his feet like in the fine brass, brass derivative of a brown, but how does this derivative of brown brass look? As if it burned in the furnace. Very, very dark skin. But listen to this, we hear because of his voice. And his voice as the sound of many waters. You see that? 
The same thing we read in Ezra, the sixth chapter. His voice like the sound of many waters. So look what it says here. In 2 Ezra 6 and 17. But he's an angel. He's the spirit of the Most High. And it happened that when I heard, had heard it, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened. And behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. See? Same thing. Mashiach Yahushai as the spirit of the Most High, as the angel of the Most High. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh, draw near, and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. And will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Yeah, that the affliction of Zion, we the Zion, we the children of Israel, Zion, shall be the fulfilled. We ain't talking about no land. Let's talk about we, the 12 tribes of Israel. The affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Let's prove that we're Zion. Go to uh, Isaiah 51 and 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. Okay. Who's most high's people? Exodus 3 and 10. My people. Because you might think anyone could be most high's people. No. Exodus 3 and 10. Come now therefore and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people. Who are the most highest people? The children of Israel out of Egypt. Okay? There it is. So now, as so you can understand through the precepts. So now going back to 2nd Ezra 6, as he's prophesying, and you're hearing prophecy. So now let's look at verse 19 again. And we'll begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. You hear that? That have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. So our affliction will be fulfilled. But though he going to bring inquisition against those that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. That's why you look at Lamentations 4.22. Lamentations 4.22. Go right. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob's the beginning of it that following. Lamentation 4.22. It's the end. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. We just find Zion as the 12 tribes of Israel, the most highest people. Who we are. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So the last captivity we have to go through is Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the most I shall send thee into Egypt, which means captivity, slavery, and bondage again another time. How? With ships. By the way, where I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, when you go into the ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bondmen and bondwomen. Slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall save you or redeem you from the condition that the Most High put us in except for what the Most High said. He's going to do it. He's going to bring it in. He said, he will visit dying iniquity. As we just said, he's going to bring the inquisition against the ones that will be ruling at the end of the world. He already said Esau is the end of the world. O daughter of Edom. See how it coincides? He will discover thy sins. See? So, he said, I get them, they have, they have judged unjustly and unrighteously. So it tells you, Zechariah 11 and 5, for one judgment, Zechariah 11 and 5. Are you just looking for justice? Whose possessors slay them, kill them. 
and hold themselves not guilty. And they that seldom say, we were sold, but bond men and bond women, slave men and slave women, blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Most High, blessed be God, the words that they created, God and Lord, European inventions. For I am rich, they rich, and their own shepherds, their own preachers pity them not. Where they at? Where they at on the forefront? You mean to tell me no preachers that's dealing with these different religions haven't heard what we bring it for? According to thus say the most high, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It ain't changed their doctrine. Because most ain't give us no religion. And bring it for what the word said, the Bible talked to them, and not what you got to say. The people following precepts of men instead of precepts of the most high. He going to get you for that. Better read Matthew 5, 19, man. 17 on down, but 19 is to you preachers. I'm telling you, man, you better try and come and learn before it's too late. And all you just listening to him, you're going to be going down, you're going to be the least in the kingdom, it says. You don't repent. and start telling the truth and seeking out the truth. Let's see, you got to look at, it says, once again, 2nd Ezra 6 and 19. And will begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly. See, hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. See? Un hurt unjustly, you just heard that. Who's possessed a slave and hold himself not guilty. Just heard that, right? It's a, it's a method of whole mad madness. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. That's what we read about. That's so what he's saying. When he's saying, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. This is what they're going to be doing. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. You see? That's why he said, this is what he's going to do. He, this is what he prophecy. This is what he's going to do. Verse 4, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the most high. Not the Lord, but the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's his name forever, the world of all generations. That's what he's telling you. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, said the Most High Power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. That's what he's telling you. That's what he did to us. His chosen people. So, what goes around comes around. Because, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's just a matter of what you understand from the point of what our ancestors did, we paid for it. So what your ancestors are doing, and what their ancestors are doing, they got to pay for it too. Most have no respect to persons, point blank. They have no respect to persons. They have respect to Israel, we as a nation, but we all got to pay. We had to pay, and we've been paying. Like I said, we still going to be afflicted. Still being afflicted. Still being afflicted. Our praise the Most High, we, we have an opportunity to be redeemed from this wicked regime of understanding of being in the condition that we're in. 
It's not going to last forever. That's what he's saying. But during the time that we do have an opportunity to repent and come back to the laws of the Most High and follow his word, we got to do what's right. Just a moment. 